Peace, 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 love, light of healing, peace, love, light of healing, peace to the gods, peace to the earth. Y'all climb on in, climb on in. Blessings, blessings, family. Man, I don't know what's going on with YouTube, but they straight hating on me, man. They like really, really hating on me hard. And they always wait till I start getting really into it. When I start channeling, that's when they want to just fuck up all of my shit. <laughs> man, I'm pissed. I am pissed. But it's cool. We're going to move it over here. Y'all climb on in. Peace, peace. But I basically, I was on my YouTube and my Facebook and I was talking about, you know, how learning this one thing literally changed my whole entire life. Uh, so y'all grab y'all pens and y'all pads and we're going to keep it going on here. And we got a few questions. I'm going to pull out some cadavers. Let's get it in real quick. Let's get it in real quick. Peace, peace to the gods. Peace, peace to the earth. How y'all doing, guys and goddesses? My beautiful melanated beings. Y'all climb on in, climb on in. I'm going to wait for a few more people to get in. Uh, make sure y'all check me out on April the 8th. I'm going to actually be in Houston, Texas. I believe it's called Prairie View. So y'all make sure y'all check me out. Uh, you can buy the tickets from... Uh, let me get, let me go here real quick. Show you where we can get these tickets from. Man, they hate it on me, man. I'm pissed. <laughs> uh, let me show you where we can get the tickets from on here. But it's all good. We back at it. We back at it. You can actually go to Eventbrite and get the tickets. I'm going to send it to the computer for y'all can look at it on there. But make sure y'all go cop y'all tickets. It is limited seating. So make sure y'all get the tickets as soon as possible. But here it is. So you will go to Eventbrite. And it's called the HBC Youth. I mean the HBC Youth Liberation Tour. All right. And buy your tickets, y'all. Buy your tickets. Buy your tickets. Y'all climb on in, climb on in. I want to teach y'all something. Once you got your pen and once you got your pad, type in some nines and we're going to get straight to it. Yeah, man, I don't know what they got going on, but it's crazy, y'all. Let me pull up my presentation, too, real quick while y'all climbing in. But, man, they, they messing up everything. And they ain't even say nothing crazy. I ain't mentioned the C word, the none of that. They just cut me off. They just cut me off, man. It's very annoying. How y'all feeling out there? Kawhi just put the link in for the tickets, y'all. Catch me. I'm going to be on the 8th. Be there April the 8th. Uh, Houston, Prairie View, any Dallas, anybody that's in Texas, come out. Uh, I'm bringing all of my herbs. And I'm, I'm going to give out some herbs at the end of this live, y'all, because I forgot to give them out the last live. So... Anybody that was a part of the last live, I said I was going to give away some herbs after a quiz, and I forgot to do so. I forgot to actually get a quiz. So I'm going to make sure, remind me, once we done with this presentation, to do a quiz on the presentation. And whoever get it, I will send y'all some actual uh, herbs. I will send y'all some herbs. And forgive me for that, y'all. All right, let me pull up my presentation real quick. Let me see. Almost there, family. But basically, I was just talking about, remember, I was doing a live with y'all and I was talking about the five things that we needed to actually, you know, heal ourselves of all diseases. And I was talking about all the diseases I had. I had diabetes, high blood pressure. My kidneys was failing. I had scar tissue on my heart. I was smoking at least 20 blunts a day. I was smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. On top of that, I was snorting cocaine. I was damn near drinking a pint. All, all the way up to a fifth of Remy Martin a day. So, you know, I was fat. I had toenail fungus. My toenails was blacker than this screen, y'all. Like, I literally was unhealthy. I was sick and I was dying with dis-ease because of the food that I was eating, because of the water I was drinking or the liquids I was drinking because I wasn't really drinking no water. And because the environment that I was in. And I noticed once I changed the five things that I taught you I, I taught y'all about about a month ago, you know, things started to look up for me. So, you know, if you if you push all these things together, I really call it this one thing I learned to heal my diseases. So that's what I wanted to talk to y'all about. Hold on, let me pull up one more thing, y'all, and then we're going to get this started. All right, we good. All right, so yeah, y'all, y'all saying, wow, man, I was jacked up. And now, you know, uh, all praises, you know, due to the creator, I, I've healed thousands of people from all these so-called diseases. So I was a person with disease. I was a person, you know, where my body was throwing itself into a, a mad detoxification uh, process 
And I was scared of the detoxification process because I didn't realize or I didn't know or understand or understand or understand what this ease was. So I was running to these hospitals not knowing that my body was just working miraculously trying to get all the toxemia from the environment and from the acid, acidic form and mucus foods that I was eating. So I got diagnosed with all these diseases. But, you know, that heart attack scared me straight. I straight had a heart attack, y'all. Snorted the line, smoking cigarettes, drinking my liquor, end up having a, a heart attack. Young. Had to go to the hospital. It scared me straight, man. And, and, and when I started learning health and healing, I started realizing how how the mind is interwoven within this, within this environment and how if you don't change the environment, you cannot heal. And that's why, you know, I give all praises to uh, the late great Dr. Sabi. He got the Usha, Usha Village where he created his own environment for you can heal it, you know. Uh, made the most high blessed that ancestor. Uh, me, I created Yaki Detoxification Home. Of course, we had to shut it down because we was booking that thing out and we had too many bathrooms, but we building another one up right now as we speak. So, you know, it's very, very, very good that we are actually build in our environments, but you have to start creating this own environment at home. You have to make sure that you bring in the right nutrients and you have to get away from the anti-nutrients. We have to, you have to make sure that you bring in the, the right hydration within your household and you're getting away from the waters that's not feeding the molecular structure or feeding the cells of the body. You have to get away from the acid forming foods and started bringing actually alkaline forming foods in your household, especially if you controlling the food. You know, it's crazy that a lot of us go on these healing and health journeys and we eat good, but we let our children continue to eat the bullshit that's caused our sickness in the first place just to keep a smile on their face. That is not love, y'all. That is actually hatred because you're feeding your children things that they do not love to eat. I mean, that 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 is bad for their uh, bodies that they love to eat, but it's killing them in the long run. But you trying to change your whole entire life and you eating healthy as hell, but you still buying them snacks. You still buying them artificial sweeteners, sugars, candy. You still putting them on gnarly grains and beans and everything else. So you are the adult and you are the parent of your household. So you have to change that environment because you are the God of your house. A God creates. You have the ability. You are capable of creating a healthy environment, not only for your children, but for yourself and for your significant other within your household. Now, what goes on once you leave the house, that's something different. But we can even change that if we start buying our own land and acreage. You know what I'm saying? I don't got to see you for seven acres. I don't got to see your ass for 20 acres. That means these trees is going to be creating some type of oxygen. You can create your own little bubble boy effect if you just buy land. But if you can't and you in the inner cities, then that means your household is supposed to be essentially healthy as possible. You're supposed to have all uh, plants growing around your house, especially plants that emits a lot of oxygen for you can breathe in this oxygen and you know you can exhale the carbon dioxide to feed the plants. You need things like money trees spider plants. There's so many plants that you can bring into your apartment and to your house to increase your oxygen flow by at least 34%. At least. You see what I'm saying? You can start making sure you bring in a certain type of H2O or H3O inside of your house. You can connect with farmers markets, create that little chain that I was talking about. So you control your household, family. Start creating an environment. You are God. Now, am I saying that you the God? No. We know that we are not the creator because I was created. But am I a reflection of that creator? And do I have them creative capabilities and gifts inside of me? Yes, I do. And God showed me that every day when I I have the choice to either eat bad or to eat good. That is a choice to change my life and to change my environment. When I'm going to the store and I'm buying some food, I can either buy the good food or the bad food. I have the capability of getting seeds, planting the seeds into the soil, watering them, letting the creator shine the sun on them. And then from that food grows from there. I have the choice to do that. I have a choice to say no. You are creator because you actually get to determine your destination. You get to choose right now. You can say right now to hell with breathing in toxic air. I'm going to go somewhere else. And if I can't go somewhere else, I'm going to do something as simple as go to Walmart and buy a $30 air purifier. Simple. 
You just made a conscious decision to change your environment. Simple shit is what makes you God. We think it's the big stuff. No, it's the little tedious things that's going to keep you healthy. It's the little tedious changes in your life that's going to keep longevity. It's going to keep you from aging. It's going to help your children live a long time. It's the little stuff. We act like this shit is hard. It is not hard, family. We thinking about it too hard. I know y'all be hearing me say all these big words. and Look, that don't mean nothing. You know when you eat something that's bad for your body, stop eating it. You know when you're drinking something that's dehydrating, you stop drinking it. You know after you smoke a cigarette, you feel the heart palpitations and the dryness of the mouth and the itching of the tongue and your eyes start feeling like it's prickles back there and your blood pressure start elevating. You know it's bad for you. Simply stop smoking them. You have the choice. The thing is, we say that, and then we use the word addiction. And we have to truly stop using that word because when you see how addiction works and you see how these things actually connects with the dopamine receptors, uh, with the dopamine receptors or the opiate receptors, this is a choice because it wouldn't connect with them if you would just stop putting it in your body and it will be tricking your reward system. So we use addiction for the excuse to do what we want to do. Let's stop using that because if you was truly sick and tired, if you was truly done living that life of hell, if you was truly done having that acidic blowback on your cells, if you was truly done having heart palpitations, if you was truly done being overweight, if you was truly done having cavities on your teeth, having fingernail fungus, having high blood pressure, having headaches and migraines all damn day, you would change your diet, you would change your environment, and you would change the way you interact with your environment. And the reason why you can't pull that excuse on me, you talking to a drug addicted yes i used to be i used to be addicted to drugs i smoked over 20 blunts a day y'all i smoked a pack of cigarettes newport shorts in a box a day i drunk over a pint of liquor seven uh remy martin 1738 a day a day i used to snort hella cocaine at least five to ten lines a day how you think i was so sick huh and i stopped that shit you know why? Because I was sick and tired. I didn't want to die. I didn't want to die. So I stopped. I, I used that addiction word for over five years. So I know when you bullshit me. You can't bullshit the bullshitter. I did it. I bullshitted for five years. I snorted cocaine five years. Smoked cigarettes damn near my whole life. I've been drinking since I was 10 years old, y'all. Since I was 10. Do y'all realize how corrupted and obstructed my body was? Why y'all think I was so fat? My hair couldn't grow. My skin was bad. I had white patches all over my face. I'm five six, y'all. Five five and a half with my shoes off, and I was a hundred. I was two hundred and fifteen pounds and two hundred and fifty pounds up and down, up and down. You see what I'm saying? I, man, look, y'all don't understand what I've been through. So so when we healing and y'all coming to me and y'all telling me all this stuff, I already know what it is. It ain't that you addicted. It's that you are pleasured by the foods. I get it because they do mess with the dopamine, dopamine receptors. They do attach themselves to opiate uh, uh, receptors on the brain. So it do give you that sexual chemistry. We are sexually addicted to the food. It's a sex exchange that's going on here. And when you look at, at it on MRI, the same woman that's having having an orgasm or the same man that's ejaculating into his woman or ejaculating period when he's going through his sexual exchange, the lightning on the MRI of the brain, the same thing happened when you bite into a chicken wing. It's the same receptor. It's the same euphoria of chemicals. What they do is they put, and how they measure this is they do it by something called radioactive isotopes. This is a real study done where they put radioactive isotopes and die inside of the brain and then you do certain things and they watch how the dye re interacts with the brain. Tell me why the shit act just like you having an orgasm when you eat your candy bar, when you eat your chicken, when you eat all the things that you know that's not good for you, but you use the excuse that you addicted. No, you are in like and in love with these bad things. Now, am I saying it's your fault? No. Of course, it's the propaganda. Of course, it's the teller of visions. Of course, it's the promotions and the programming. I get all of that. But just say that you love eating this shit. And then that's the first step. See, that was the first step to me. I had to, I had to, I had to say, damn, I love this. I, I love the, the snorting the cocaine. I love the drinking the alcohol. I love it. I don't like, I don't like how it makes me feel in the morning, but while I'm on it and while I'm high, I feel good as hell. Then when I started admitting that fact, it's like, damn, but it's bad for the body.
And I kept doing it until, and I'm, I'm a cancer, so I got, I got that scared straight mentality. I literally have to bump my head to get it right. If it wasn't for that heart attack, I probably wouldn't be here right now speaking to y'all. If it wasn't for that heart attack, I probably wouldn't be here right now with the ability or capability of healing myself or healing you guys. If it wasn't for me getting locked up, I'd probably still be gangbanging, probably still out here robbing and stealing and selling dope. And so, so me, I learned from my own lessons. I, I learned from my own mistakes. Unfortunately, you have the actual pleasure. Well, fortunately, this is a fortunate thing. You have the pleasure right now to learn from my own bullshit. You see what I'm saying? You can learn from me. You don't have to go down the same road that I went down. You can literally change your food up now and start seeing what it's doing to your body. You can literally change your water income source and see what it does to your body. You don't have to keep going down this road. Do y'all know how many people we are literally getting off their deathbeds? Y'all think that we like getting brothers and sisters off their deathbeds? It's so I mean, it's so draining on my energetic field because I got to talk to you. I got to hear you cry. I got to hear you. Being close to death is, is a is a, a scary thing, y'all. I done been shot. I done been stabbed. I, I, done, I done had a heart attack. I done been in the hospital doped up thinking I ain't going to make it home tomorrow, thinking I'm not going to see my, my parents anymore, thinking I'm not going to see the first daughter that I had at that time, which she's 16 now. So I done been through that. Do y'all know how that feel to hear you going through that, to hear you going through all of the different things, to hear somebody with stage four cancer that they had 30 rounds of chemotherapy. They can't even move without feeling like their body is in freaking hell. Y'all know how that feel to me? And then all the responsibility is basically on me to have this person feel better. I'd rather do preventive maintenance. I'd rather you listen to this message right now and change whether you having stage four cancer on your deathbed, the allopathic community giving you 30 days to a month to live. Then you want to listen to come to Yaki and expect Yaki to perform a miracle. Look, let's catch it before we get that far. That's all I'm saying, family. And, and those, those five things that I gave you will help you with that. Them five things that I gave you. Just make sure that you're eating the nutrient-dense foods. Stay away from anti-nutrient foods. Stay away from it. Make sure that you know. And I was talking about on my uh on my YouTube before they started jiggling wires and messing with it, how it's crazy how we have this sexual chemistry with our food, and we and, and we learned it from how we have the sexual chemistry with each other. And what I mean by that is this, y'all. Us as men and us as women. We are so addicted to sexual energy and sex, that creative part, that we will look at each other and you will be like, damn, that is a dark, brown, tall, handsome young man, a muscular young man. You, <coughs> you don't care about his mother. You don't care about who his father is. You don't even care if this Negro got a, a felony. But he looks so good to you, you will make a life-changing decision and have sex with him and possibly procreate and be stuck with this man all of your life, in t or at least 18 years, all because how good it looked, but you never investigated his mother to see if his mother had any type, was he a mama's boy? You never seen if his mother had any type of psychological problems. You never said, damn, who is a grandma? You never checked the daddy and see if the daddy had, had a hostile mentality. Did a daddy beat the mama ass? You never seen if, if you never checked and checked none of this out, right? So then you get with the dude and you realize that you done married or you done got with one of the most narcissistic Negroes on planet Earth and now you pregnant. So now you got to deal with this toxic Negro for 18 years. Do you know how stressful that is on a woman? Or let's flip it. You see the beautiful woman, dark skinned woman, ass, fat, round, hips, breasts, everything looking amazing, right? <coughs> everything looking amazing. Only thing you want, you want to hit it though. You're not thinking like, dang, can this woman cook? You ain't thinking that. Dang, who was her mother and her father? Is her father even in her life? Because she might got daddy issues. You might straight have to play daddy and make up for 15 fucking years of her life. You ain't worried because the ass look good. Dang, what's up with her mom? Is her mom in her life? Do she have any home training? Is she loyal? How many Negroes done ran through her? She might even be ran through. But you don't check that. Then you get with her, have a baby by her, and realize that she the worst baby mother ever. She's full of drama. She's full of toxins. Or she's or she's toxic. See that she have a complex. 
But hey, you got to hit it though, right? So so you seen something that looked it good. It was appealing and a pleasing to the eye and you took a chance and now you have a toxic blowback from it and you wishing you didn't do it again. Tell me that. Now, do we do the same thing to our food? We do. We will go to the grocery store or it, it first it'll get promoted to us on TV, especially chicken and Popeye's. Them Negroes spend billions of dollars a year to make chicken look sexy as hell. You're not looking at it as a sexual stimulant, but that's what's happening. Your, your mouth start watering. The dopamine receptors start firing off in the brain. The blood starts going, even the blood pressure. Your blood pressure even raises looking at these. And the first, oh, I need to get me some chicken. Let's order some pizza. Let's go get some shrimp and lobster. So you having this sexual and heightened sense for the food, you go get the food. And guess what? You ain't say, where the hell did these grains come from? Who was the mother and the father of these grains? Who was the mother and father of these pieces? What ingredients were they made of? Huh? Did this, did this come from a GMO crop? Is this a GMO bird we call chicken? Who is the damn ancestry of this chicken? Do this is this motherfucker even real? Don't I thought when I checked and, and when I wanted to meet the mother and father, I couldn't even find the mother and father of the chicken. The damn thing came, it skipped genealogies, it skipped the whole genome, and now all of a sudden the ancestors of a dinosaur. That's what they tell you. When you when you actually try to get to know your food, it's called a food and body relationship, family. And you and you just checking for the relations. You don't want the ship. You don't want to get it. See, a ship take you over a vast amount of water to get you to a destination. You don't want that part. Your ass only want the relation. Same thing with me, with, uh, with, with me and men and women and women and how we used to react. We only want the relations. I don't care about your, your family. I don't care if you got a brother that's a murderer and he don't, he don't like Negroes. I, I just want to hear. I don't care if your pops at home. Let me in through the window. Let me in through the window, me in high school. Let me in through the window. I don't care. I'm going to risk my life for that ass. That's the mindset we got. Now is instead of risking our life for some pussy or risking our life for some, some penis, we risk our lives for some taste buds, family. Every day, we don't get to know nothing about the food. We don't study the origins of the food. We don't study if it's GMO, if it's pesticides, insecticides sprayed. We don't study if it's, if, 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 if it's in its original place of origin. We don't study none. We just jump in bed with the food. And guess what? That same toxic relationship that you got yourself in because you don't like to study or you don't like to have the traditional sense of marriage. It's the same thing with the marriage that you do with the relationship of your food. And that toxic blowback come back and it kill you. It gives you all types of cancer. It mutates your cells. It makes your cells malignant. It brings on an acid blow back to the body. And then you on your deathbed. And now you want to change. But sometimes it's too late, family. So, so look, I'm telling y'all coming from that, healing myself from that and healing thousands from that. Hey, how about we just change now? How about we just change now, family? We have to change the food and body relationship narrative, family. We got to change it. And we have to apply this same thing with our food to our households and to who we dating and to who we interact with. Because we have the same mentality for, for vagina and for penis that we have for food. And we wonder why STDs is, is number one. Se yes, sexually transmitted demons. Because STD in a sense, I believe, is just a, the, the interchanging of, of bad bacteria. And I can't call it bad, a pleomorphic bacteria. But that's a whole other topic. I don't even want to dive deep in there. That's the reason why STDs is so high. Amongst the black community. That's the reason why the divorce rate is so high amongst the black community. That's the reason why diabetes mellitus, hyperglycemia is so high amongst the black community. That's the reason why cancer, especially breast cancer and prostate cancer, is so high amongst the black community. We haven't associated or connected the relationship that we have to people and humans and the relationship that we have to our food is the fucking same. It's the same. We have the same relationship that we have with people, with our babies, mothers, baby daddies, with the friends, that friendship. Re we have the same toxic ass relationship with people that we have with our food. And you wonder why they say that nigga's a snake. He's a rat. He's a backside. He's a rat. That police a pig. 
That nigga's a dog. That woman a bitch. That's the animalistic nature. And we play it on both sides of the playing field. And we don't understand that this is what's killing us on both sides. It's the animalistic nature. We love animals. It's the animalistic lower self. Yes, family. So, so have you noticed that the same way you treat your food, you treat your significant other. The same way you treat your food, you treat your children. The same relationship you have with the shit that's in your refrigerator, you have it with people that's around you. Just saying. Now, you know, you do have your you do have your mean vegans for because I know somebody going to be on here. But what about vegans? I know I know some mean vegans, man. OK, we talking about two percent of vegans. We know we got some some phenomena where a, a man can be working out. He can be treating his body good. He can have a six pack. He can have the pecs. He can have all of the triceps and biceps and eat a good diet and still be a whore and at, at home beating on his woman. I'm not saying that that don't exist. I'm not saying that that don't exist at all, but let's talk about the truth. Let's talk about the real. Let's talk about the truth and let's talk about the real. Yeah, Yaki, I know I'm going in today. Hey, cussing and all. It is what it is. I'm mad they cut my channel off. Now, if y'all ready for these questions, type in some nines, family. If y'all ready for these questions, type in some nines. And let's get it started. Let's get it started. Yeah, we the only people that stray away from our habitat. Your environment is so important, y'all. Your environment is so important. And that's what I had to realize, y'all. It was my environment. It took me over. It, it literally took me about five months to truly, truly heal from all the things I had. And I was doing all the right things. It's just that I was still in the environment. I was still in the Hebrew community dealing with that toxic bull-ish. Bull, bull and uh, not only that, I was, I was still... In an environment with toxic uh, gang members that I used to hang out with, that was still hanging with them, and I was realizing I'm like, dang, this don't even, it's not even keeping up with me no more. I'm on an energetic diet, I'm drinking energetic liquids, I'm fasting, but I'm around Negroes that's drinking pints of liquor, getting enticed by it. You know, a few times I even, a few times I even hit the bottle. You know what I'm saying? A few times I'm like, damn, how am I healing from all of these diseases? But I'm going around people. That's participating and practicing the same thing that got me to dis-ease in the first place. It was my environment. It was my environment. These are just facts, y'all. All right, now. Uh, all right, we got the nines. So the first question is this, y'all. It says, I'm writing you. It says, greetings and abundance to you, Yaki. I'm writing you to hopefully get my questions answered on your Tuesday, which is Thursday, live transmission. I am hoping you can offer me guidance and some of my symptoms I am I have been experiencing. And the first thing, this is how I know she been listening. She didn't call out no dis-ease, y'all. She immediately went into symptoms. So she's understanding that the body have the capability of healing itself. So these symptoms is the body healing itself. And the doctors call it a dis-ease. And she want to know the root problem. What's causing the symptoms? So I see that she's been listening. She said, I am 52 years old. I'm a 52-year-old woman. Of medium, of medium weight and height, and I have recently experienced menopause. So she's going through menopause, and all menopause is is basically when you start, when the body stop producing or they decline in reproductive hormones. So if the body stop producing estrogen, pregnenolone, and uh, progesterone, then and your period stop, they will call this menopause. But then you have something called perimenopause, and what peri or premenopause is is when you start feeling all these symptomologies, but you still having a period. Then all of a sudden, it does stop. So she going through menopause. It says, uh, so far, I'm only experiencing hot flashes. And the reason why she's experiencing hot flashes is because what governs the reproductive organ of a woman and man? The pituitary. Well, what the pituitary is is a close relationship with other than the actual pineal gland, the thyroid. So now it's messing with her thyroid chemistry, which means it's going to mess with her vitamin D3, vitamin D12 and stuff, too. So we see she having hot flashes because her basal temperature or the thermostat of her body or what we call the thyroid is flickering on and off because the hormones are out of whack. So we're going to automatically have to address the thyroid gland with this. All right. Whenever you're dealing with menopause and you want the symptoms to basically go away, even though your period going to stop anyway, you want the symptoms. Because sometimes these symptoms can very be very harsh on the body, especially when the body is over 51. And you can go through menopause early, too. You be in menopause at the at the number of 30, y'all, at the age number of 30. But, you know, what they suggest they menopause age is is 51 and up. But I even know. 
People that's, I know a woman right now that's 80 years old that still gets her period. We healing her right now. She still have a period at 81. So, so, you know, menopause is on, and that's how you know menopause is unnatural too. Menopause is unnatural. The, the hormone imbalance in periods is unnatural, like heavy periods. When you really study back and you get back into ancient history and you see periods, they used to have just three drops. That was a period. Three little drops. Three little drops of blood was a period. Then you start seeing where the hunter and gatherers start eating more grains, start eating a lot of more meat. Then you start seeing periods get heavier in history, showing that a period is nothing but your vagina detoxifying, not only the endometrial layer of the of the uterus and of the cervix to get rid of what you would call the corpus luteum or the egg that was that that didn't basically get fertilized but it's also getting rid of all the other hormones that you're bringing into your body by the foods you eating so you see women that got very very bad diets have very heavy detoxes and the reason why you have very heavy detoxes is because the period or the menstrual cycle is the actual body the feminine way of the body detoxing the reproductive organ every single month. You get what I'm saying? And you notice when women change their diet or women get on a cleanse or women start eating healthy or go raw, notice how their periods damn near disappear. They don't have pain no more. They don't have hemorrhaging no more. Literally the vagina can hemorrhage y'all where big ass blood clots will come up out of that thing. But notice once she changed her diet into a livid, she don't have the minister cramping anymore. I ain't got to say, go get some cramp bark. Lady, go get some cramp bark. Go get some uh, some some black cohosh. I don't have to really start saying these things no more because her diet has changed. So now she don't have a lot to detoxify out of her uterine wall, what you would call the endometrium lining of the uterus anymore. So we see we're going to have to deal with that thyroid, right? And, and all women over here, if I'm wrong, just to, let them know I'm right. Let them know I'm right. Because I don't have a vagina. Y'all do, but we didn't heal a lot of vagina thousands. I didn't heal thousands of vaginas, so I know how they work. <laughs> All right, it says, but after visiting the doctor for my annual physical, I was told I would have more symptoms and more experience that I may be expecting, like vaginal dryness. Now it do come with vaginal dryness, but you know there's things that can actually keep your 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 vaginal area. Uh, uh, wet or moisturized, should I say, mood swings. See that? So vaginal dryness, pituitary gland. But guess what brings on vaginal wetness? Blue cohosh. You see what I'm saying? Mood swings. That's going to be aldehyde deficiency. Why are you aldehyde deficient? Because the thyroid, the parathyroid is now messing or jacking up the actual thyroid gland. I mean, not the parathyroid, but the pituitary gland is actually messing with the thyroid gland. Weight gain. What controls your weight gain? What controls your metabolism? That goes to the thyroid again. It's called the basal temperature. This is what regulates your weight to keep your weight up or down. That's why you see people that have hyperthyroidism, they're usually skinny. But people that have hypothyroidism, that's not producing enough aldine or aldine to be turned into aldide. Notice what happened or tyrosine, what happened with them? They start gaining more weight and gaining visceral fat. And the reason why they're gaining more weight and gaining more visceral fat is because their estrogen level is high in the body. And when the estrogen level go high within the body, it causes the adipose tissues or the adipose cells to reproduce because the adipose tissues and the adipose cells is these fat cells that actually stores what? Estrogen. So the more estrogen that your body produces by way of the pituitary gland, because your pituitary gland is not functioning properly, then that means it's going to cause the body to produce more fat or adipose fat cells to actually store more estrogen. So the more estrogen your body produces or these cytoestrogen chemicals, the more fat your body is going to produce to actually hold or store the estrogen. So if you can calm the estrogen down, guess what? The adipose tissues won't be produced by the DNA and you won't have the visceral fat buildup. So this goes right back to the thyroid gland and the pituitary gland as well. Loss of vitamin D. Didn't I tell y'all that? Loss of vitamin D. Now, vitamin D is made by what? Cholesterol. Cholesterol and vitamin D have something to do with what? Tyrosine and tritryptophan. Tritryptophan and tyrosine is actually governed by what, y'all? The thyroid and the parathyroid. So all of this is talking about the thyroid. So to me, I would be looking like 
is this really menopause or do your th is your thyroid going down into hypothyroidism? So I would actually get a full thyroid panel before I say she clinically have menopause. That's what I would do. So so that's what I'm going to see. I need to get some blood work on you to see if it's any men even menopause or if it's some obstruction going on with your pituitary gland and your thyroid gland. This says night sweats. Of course, you're going to get night sweats because your basal temperature, the basal size of the follicular cells are actually raising your heat of your thyroid. So if you look at the thyroid, Thyroid. Let me get a thyroid real quick, family. Hold on, family. Let me find a thyroid. Uh, what we got? All right, here go one right here. So check this out, fam. So this is a thyroid, right? Let me show y'all something. So this is a thyroid. All right, this is the laryngeal prominence, or what you call the Adam's apple. Right, the laryngeal prominence, or what you would call the Adam's apple. This is called thyroid cartilage. They call the chicroid, the chicroid cartilage tissues. This is the thyroid. What separates the thyroids is something called the ischmus. So the thyroid is actually two lobes. What connects the thyroid together is the ischmus, and this is the ischmus right here. And this, and guess what keeps this tissue connected? The parathyroid. And the parathyroid is these two little bitty balls that's on the back of the thyroid, right? Now, right here is called the trachea. This is the trachea, and this is the laryngeus or the larynx. Now, the thyroid is right here. The thyroid is made of something called follicular cells. These follicular cells are called hollow cells. They literally call it the hollow lumen. Well, inside of these hollow lumens or these follicular cells, you have this certain type of H3O constituents. It's called jelly water, literally called jelly water that's called colloid or colloid and inside the colloid is actually where aldine go to to add aldine and something called thyroglobulin they mix themselves together through a whole extraneous process and this is actually where you get your thyroid hormone from your t3s and your t4s you see that now this is actually what controls your metabolic weight uh uh, uh weight this is what controls your metabolic process. This is how you speed up your digestive process for you to break down your food. It, it regulates your temperatures. Now, what I was saying was if you look inside a follicular cell, uh, around these cells, where there's fluid that you have something called the basement side of the cells, which is the bottom of the cells called the basement basal ganglia. But then you have something called the basal side that's posterior of the cell. If that is compromised or messed up with acids or you eating acidic forming foods and stuff like that, that will actually cause you to have hot flashes because you'll remember your thyroid is the thermostat of the body. Not only is the thyroid the, therm the thermostat of the body, but the thyroid is the gear shift of the body. It's what puts your body in drive. It puts your body in reverse. It puts your body in all these different things. So we have to pay close attention to the thyroid. There's not one cell in the body that doesn't have a vitamin D receptor. Every cell needs vitamin D. But in order to actually convert vitamin D by way of cholesterol, you need cholesterol in your skin and you need the thyroid to actually function properly. I bet you, uh, goddess, this is a thyroid problem. I seriously doubt that you are going through menopause. Or it's a case of both of them, to be honest with you. It's a case of both of them. Let's keep reading though and see what you got going on. It says, are there any supplements? We don't do supplements. We don't do supplements at all or herbs. I got some herbs for you, though, uh, from your product line that you can take to assist in going through menopause process without the symptoms and the side effects. So I would be a liar to sit up here to tell you to just take these herbs if 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 it's menopause. What I think you need to do is I think you need to get some blood work. So I'm going to have Kawhi contact you. And what we can do is I will send you to my laboratory or my laboratory partners and we can check your blood and give you a full pi uh, thyroid panel to see if your thyroid. Now, once we rule out the thyroid and the parathyroid being compromised, then we can start looking and say, OK, it might be menopause. But from all these symptoms you telling me and from the weight gain and the visceral fat, I mean, the vaginal dryness, the mood swings, the vitamin D loss, the night sweats, the hot flashes. Some of those do sound like Menopause, but a lot of this sound like a structured thyroid and hyperthyroidism is that. So uh, I want you to check your basal temperature. You will get you a thermometer. You'll literally put it under each arm uh, and you will write down the size. It's supposed to be at 97.6. That is an actual my op or a, a homeostasis uh, balance of temperature. If it's too high, that means you're into hyperthyroidism. If it's too low, that means you're into hypothyroidism. That's a good way to check. Other than that, I say a full thyroid panel is what you need. Now, if you is going through menopause, 
If that's what you're going through, we're going to call out the symptoms and I'm going to call out the herbs. So if y'all ready to write down these herbs, y'all type in some nines and we're going to get to it. Type in some nines, we'll get straight to it. If y'all ready to write down these herbs. Now, this if she is going through menopause, though. This if she's going through menopause. Can you reverse menopause? I have seen plenty of, and I hate the word menopause, but if we're going to say that, I have seen plenty of women heal their bodies that's supposed to be going through menopause that come back on a period. And when they come back on a menstrual cycle, guess what? It's not even heavy. It's only a few drops. That's that's what your period is supposed to look like. And, and when you go through ladies that's been eating raw for years and years on end, like I know a, a raw eaters, raw food has been raw for 10 years. And you ask her about her period. She'd be like, oh, yeah, I'll probably get a, a couple of drops for, throughout a few days. No pain. You know, so so light you don't even know your period is on. That shows you that even though we're supposed to be getting a period, we don't have a lot of things to shed. So if you don't have a lot of stuff to detox, then your period ain't going to be heavy. That's just that's simple science, family. All right. So the first one was she was talking about hot flashes. Now, we know that hot flashes come from what? They come from the thyroid because the thyroid is in control of the basal temperature. So we're going to need to regulate the thyroid. The best way to regulate the thyroid is through aldine. Aldine is then converted through out to aldine by something called hydroperoxidase. Hydroperoxidase and pendrin is these enzymes that actually oxidizes aldine and turn it to uh, aldide by sticking thyroid globulin and tyrosine together with aldine. You see that? And this is when it actually makes its metabolic change and it becomes a negative ion. Uh, once that happens, you can start regulating the thyroid and the basal temperature can actually regulate itself. So I would say aldine. Aldine, aldine, iodine. You can get aldine, aldine to be converted from aldide by way of uh, you have focus. Focus is what you call bladder rack. Uh, you also have sea moss. Make sure you check in and get in the right sea moss. There's a lot of fake sea mosses out here, but sea moss have over a hundred and different families. All sea moss do not look alike. All sea moss do not gel up, family. And that don't mean it's fake. I want y'all to put that. You got club moss. You got dose. You got kelp. All these things will help with aldine, y'all. So, so look for sea vegetables when it comes to aldine, or get you some sea salt. Now, I'm not saying go heavy with the sea salt, but if you're making like a different type of salad with some greens, some microgreens and stuff like that, sprinkle a little bit of sea salt on there because that, that's, that's converted aldide. You see that? These are good things that'll help you with that problem. Also, if you're having hot flashes, make sure you're sleeping naked. Sleep naked. Go and sleep naked with the covers off. If, if you stay in a climate that is very conducive for your healing, crack that window and get some natural air in there as well. That'd be very, very good for you. And then an another thing she was talking about was vaginal dryness. Now, I told y'all, I knew a good thing for vaginal dry uh, dryness. Uh, rose hips was good for vaginal dryness, but turns out that rose hips was is, is straight up a fake plant. And I mean fake, fake. So I can't I can't say rose hips no more. But you have another one uh, called blue cohosh, not black cohosh, but blue cohosh actually stimulates, you know, uh, what you would call copeland and actually get the vagina wet again. Mood swings. Mood swings is again thyroid. That's dealing with calcium. So whenever you have mood swings or you, you're clinically depressed, there's so many different government and university articles showing that it's, there's a very close association between depression and hyperthyroidism. So that means that's the thyroid again. That's going to go back to what I was talking about, stimulating it by eating foods that have iodine in it. Uh, weight gain. Go back to the thyroid. You have to check your estrogen levels. So you have to stay away from things that have high estrogen in them. Get off of all soy. Soy's got estrogen in them. Make sure you're not drinking no bottled water. Bottled water creates its own cytoestrogens. Uh, uh, what else got estrogen in it? Make sure you stay away from herbs that have high estrogen in them. Like, for instance, lavender. Lavender have hella high estrogen levels in them. So stay away from lavender. Uh, 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 chamomile. Chamomile have high levels of estrogen in them. And if you think about it, I was talking to, uh, talking to this with uh, Danny. Uh, and Danny, she was just like, it makes sense because it's more of a common herb. How, 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 when you drink, uh, 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 calamine and you mix it with lavender, I mean, chamomile and you mix it with lavender. Cause we got something called the surrender tea that actually got these two herbs in it. How it gives you that sense of nurturing and that sense of calmness. Then you start looking up the chemical compositions of it. Oh, that's why it has high amounts of estrogen in it. It's got that big mama factor. Big mama is the nurturer. You know what I'm saying? So stay away from herbs that have high estrogen in them. And that'll help you with that. And what else she say? Uh, vitamin D. The best way to get your vitamin D is sitting in the sun. And uh, I'm pretty sure that you are a melanated uh, aboriginal woman. 
uh, Aboriginal of America. So you most definitely need at least two hours of sunlight a day. At least two hours of sunlight a day. And then night sweats. That's the same thing as hot flashes. And it's good to sweat at night because you're sleeping. Your body and your cells are restoring themselves. And you're detoxifying because you're opening up the NRF2 pathways. You're opening up the meridian pathways. And you detoxing. Look, there go Danny right there. What's up, love? Make sure y'all follow Danny. Let's talk food. Make sure y'all follow her. And make sure y'all follow Kawhi. Look on who I'm following and follow them. Look, just go to my followers. I'm only following four people. <clears throat> and one of them is my backup page, but follow them. Make sure y'all follow them. All right, what else we got? <clears throat> it says, I also have been having issues with my eyes where I get really, where they get really blurry and I have a hard time seeing with my reading glasses on. It's probably time for you to start doing a little bit of sun gazing, but I bet you you just got mucus built up in your eyes and you just need to cleanse your eyes out. So, you know, I suggest right off back you eat, you get some uh, eye bright and you start drinking eye bright tea and you go on a website and get our eye bright tincture and you start washing your eyes out with that eye bright. It says, uh, I, I went to my exam and they said that I had 20-20 vision and my eye blurriness is due to me working and okay so look check this out <clears throat> and my eye blurriness is due to me working for long periods of time on my computer so that's the blue light now remember i did a whole live probably like two lives ago talking about blue light and artificial lights and how it causes blindness how it messes with our cells how it knocks off our circadian rhythm how it stimulates and then destimulates our pineal gland how it trip our thyroid how it's an endocrine disruptor so we most definitely need to get away from the blue lights you got too many artificial lights, so stop staring at your computer all day. I suggest that you get something called red light therapy glasses and put on these red lights. Also, I suggest you get a red light screen protector to put on your computer and turn that light down on your computer. Make sure you turn the light down and you're not staring at that blue light, that blue artificial light all day, because that will mess with your eyesight. <clears throat> Where we got? Eye bright, boom, boom, boom. Okay, look, check this out. I have even taken Albright and saw slight improvements. So that's what I just recommended to you. So if you've been taking Albright and saw slight improvements, but you still go days with it being blurry, then you have to do the other things that I just said. Make sure that you're not being subjected to too many artificial lights. Stay away from blue light as much as possible. Make sure that you sun gazing when the sun is coming up and when it's going down. When it's going down, do not sun gaze uh, when the sun is as high as in the sky because it could damage your iris. It says the last question I have regarding some of these problems is I've been having a skin. I've been having with my skin near my anus. OK, so she says she having a problem with the skin near her anus. It says I will sometimes get small tears around the area and it takes a week or so to heal. It says I get regular testing done for STDs and et cetera, but everything comes back clear. It sounds like anal fissures to me. It sounds like you have a disease or a dis-ease called anal fissures. And look, what's crazy is the thyroid and the parathyroid is in control of your connective tissue. So calcium is what actually binds to the tissues and not only that, but zinc as well. It binds to the tissues and it keeps your molecular structure together. So what's over the connective tissues and what keeps the connective tissues together is the actual parathyroid. Now, we know for a fact that you got a thyroid problem due to all the symptomologies that you're telling us, right? So now we see that you have a rip in your anus that keeps ripping and tearing and it takes a while to heal, right? And then you said you get regular STDs, but everything come back clear. So we know it's not an STD or a fungus or a sexually transmitted demon or bacteria and says... I use wipes to clean. Look, I use wipes to clean with, and I am very careful not to wipe too hard. That's good. It says, I do not have anal sex. So it's not caused by that either. I am at loss for words of what these symptoms are doing and what I got going on with my body. What can I do to lessen the time to heal them? I'm telling you right off back that you have anal fissures. And I'm going to show you what anal fissures is, right? Check this out, family. <clears throat> So I'm going to show y'all this. So this is a large intestine, right? So if you're looking at a large intestine, just to break down the anatomy of the large intestines, you actually have the cecum. So right here is the appendix. This is the appendix tail. Then the appendix tail coming to something called the cecum. Now the cecums go into the ascending colon. The ascending colon then goes into something called the transverse colon. The transverse colon come down into something called this, uh, called the descending colon. Right here is what you would call the sigmoid colon. 
This is the sigmoid. Then down you have the rectum, and from the rectum you have the anus. Now, if you look inside of this anus, y'all, notice you see a tear. Y'all see that tear? That's called anal fissures. Now, what anal fissures is, this is called the anal sphincter. And the reason why it's called a sphincter, just like the cardiac sphincter or the pyloric sphincter of the small duodenum bowel duct wall, a sphincter just means the closing or opening thereof. So her anal sphincter is ripped. Now, and the reason why it's ripped, it can be because of two things, three things. Her pelvic, her pelvic floor is too weak. You see that? I've been talking so loud, y'all. My throat, I'm getting a sore throat. I'm probably going to lose my voice. Her pelvic floor is actually too weak, and she needs to stimulate and increase the muscles of her pelvic floor, or the muscles are too tight. And let me show y'all pelvic floor. But people don't know what a pelvic floor is. All right, so if y'all looking, these are kidneys, adrenals. Y'all see the prostate? Now, if I'm going to turn it. Y'all see the anus? This is the anus right here. But y'all see these muscles? You see these muscles? This is the pelvis. Y'all see these muscles? These muscles are called the pelvic floor. If these muscles are too stimulated and too tight, when poop or when bowel moves through this, it'll actually rip and tear. And usually your bowel is like this if you're eating gunky food like grains. Grains will literally gunk up because it's a glue. It comes with gluten like spelt and stuff like that. Spelt and rye and all these other foods. All the glutenin will cause agglutination to the poop and it will stick the poop together. Plus it had yields high fiber. So the fiber hardened the poop. Not only do you got glue sticking this stuff together and coagulating the blood, but you also got fiber that's hardening the poop. So now you got, you ain't doing pelvic stretching. You ain't making your pelvic floor wall flexible. So now the muscles are tight around the anus. So it's already a tight ass hole. Now, all of a sudden you eating these foods like high meats, uh, uh, gnarly grains, gnarly beans, uh, food that got too much fiber in it that's making the poop hard. So when the poop come through hard and it don't, ha and it's all solidified or calcified, and it don't have any liquids in it to make the poop or the stool more softer, it come through and it rips and tears the hole. And this is where you get opening and cracks and sores on the anal wall or what you would call the anal sphincter. You see that? And this is actually what we call anal fixtures. Anal fissures. So that's what you got going on. Now, let me tell you how to actually fix this problem, though. So let me show you all what it looked like. Again, this is the colon. This is the anus. If you look right there, y'all see that hole cut? This is what she got going on. Anal fissures. And the reason why is her connective tissue is not strong enough. So we're going to have to go back to the thyroid because remember the parathyroid and the thyroid is actually what strengthens the connective tissue. Not only that, she's eating too many foods that's high in, in too many complex sugars and proteins with fiber on it. So that's hardening her poop, meaning that she's dehydrated too and she's not producing enough chyme. See, chyme will actually break it down, but chyme is producing a small duodenum tract. It's produced by the hydrochloric acid and what you call mucogoblin inside of the uh, fungus of the stomach and it mixes in the duodenum as well and then you got bowel too bowel will actually help it because bowel is created by the the uh liver but it's thawed up into the gallbladder and this will help break down the fats and stuff like that so i can tell that your digestive enzymes is not reacting enough so your foods is coming out too solid and you probably got too many big turds coming out. And you can break them things up by eating more hydrative food, more fruits, more H2O, more watery vegetables, more bok choy, more romaine. You see that? More watery lettuces and all of your fruits. Your fruits is very good. Now, I don't recommend you eat astringent fruits right now because it's going to burn the hell out of that hole. Now, when you keep pooping and keep pooping and it's hard and hard, it's going to keep because these things can heal up within a day. Or two, but if they heal up and you keep pooping because you haven't changed your diet, so you keep pooping, this solidified bowel movement is going to keep re-tearing and reopening these uh, uh, these areas. So, hydrate your body, eat more less dense foods. That way, your poop don't have so much fiber to it; it is not too thick to obstruct the colon wall or to obstruct the anal uh, sphincter. Another thing is, too, you can go on my website and you can actually get my thyroid and parathyroid teacher or get my essential or granule kit. And that will actually stimulate and strengthen the thyroid and strengthen the parathyroid for you can strengthen your connective tissue. Also, you need to get on YouTube and you need to find out hip mobility 
reflexes and stretching. You can get right on YouTube and just find more ways to make your pelvic floor more strong, but relax at the same time. Because if your pelvic floor was stronger, but the muscles was less tense, then your anus can relax more. And that way the muscles around your anus won't be so damn tight. And you got to force a turd through there. And it's just ripping up everything that it see when it's on its way through the turd. You see that? So soften your, 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 your stool. The best stool softener you have is your watery fruits. So right now you should automatically switch to a 70% fruit, 30% diet, uh, vegetable raw diet, all in hydrative with more H3O2 constituents inside of it. So stay away from the kales, stay away from the arugulas. These things are hard and they got complex amino acids in them and they come with high, high fiber. Also, if you're going to do the fruits, make sure you skin in the fruits, take the skin off of them. That way you don't have all that fiber going on and your, it can soften your stool and, and your poop can come out. And now you can finally heal without hard poop. As soon as you heal your anus up, you got another hard turd coming through, ripping it back up. That's what I recommend for that. And I see that you truly have thyroid issues. Everything that you're screaming here is thyroid, 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 thyroid. You most definitely need to get the essential glandular kit off of my website. I run to their fast and buy that, the essential glandular kit. And we have to realize, too, when that anus is so tight right there, when a muscle is constricted, what happens to the blood flow? If I make a muscle right now, what happens to that blood flow? The blood stops circulating to that area. So if you got the pelvis floor or the pelvis wall muscles super constricted and super tight, that means ain't no blood or oxygen making it to these levels. Now, if not blood or oxygen making it to these levels, that means nutrients that's in the blood is not making it to these levels uh, to these levels of the tissues either. Now, since you constricting oxygen and nutrients, how are you going to keep rehealing that anyway? So that might play a, a major factor into why the anus is not healing itself. Because it's too, the muscles are too tight. And you're not allowing blood flow or circulation and oxygen to the area. So the phytonutrients cannot heal or repair the area as well. So that's what I recommend. I recommend that you actually do that. I recommend that you get the essential granule kit from off the website. If y'all got any questions according to this particular case, y'all can ask them right now. While y'all asking those, I'm going to do a quick commercial. All right. So uh, for those that want to see me live. Because they keep taking down my Facebook page. They keep taking down my Instagram posts. They taking down my Facebook videos and teachings. So it's best to catch me live, raw and uncut. Because when we live, raw and uncut, I get to say what I want to say. You can catch me actually in Prairie View, Texas, which is 30 minutes away from Houston, Texas. I, and I'm going to be actually at uh, Prairie View A&M a a uh, a University. Uh, oct no, not October. April the 8th, which is next month. I'll be there next month. Y'all can go on here and get y'all tickets. All you have to do is go to eventbrite.com, type in Yaki Awaken, and it'll pop up, y'all. Or you can go on my YouTube page, or you can click the link in the bio here on Instagram. And uh, when you click the link in the bio, just click on HBCU Health and Liberation Tour, and it will pop up. Grab your tickets. You do not want to miss this. We kicking the tour off. Right here in Prairie View or what you'll call Houston, Texas. We giving away herbs. I'm coming with never heard before information. And y'all know we pack all of our events out and we have an amazing time and our people come out changed. The people that come to my seminars leave out different in a good way, in a good way. For those that's looking for any type of herbal healing, any type of things that will help assist in their herbal healing, y'all can go to www.yakiawaken.com. For people that say that the website is not working, it works. If you see a white screen, just scroll up and scroll down, and the screen will pop up. All right, we got plenty of herbs on here. Uh, all you have to do is just go through the tabs. You can click on geogenetics, them are for more serious diseases. You can click on the education tab. We have the eat to live, the instruction page. You can learn about the 12 body parts, all of the herbs I approve, list of resources and document downloads. You can also click on herbal stores. And once you click on herbal store, you can click on the consultation link. That's how you get a consultation with Kawhi. If you want a consultation with me, you have to email us at our website email, which is info at Yaki Awakening dot com or orders at yakiawaken.com. Notice I have the yakiawaken.com on it. That way you know you're not getting played and you will pay a different price to actually talk to me. Or you can just talk to Kawhi. I taught her everything she knows. She's very amazing with the knowledge and the information. So I think you should talk to Kawhi because it's much cheaper. But any type of herbs you need is on this particular website. And that will conclude that commercial.
So let's see what we got for y'all. We coming to a city near you, family. But I say make it to this first one, man. Look, get get on the plane. Come see me. Come see me. Come see me. But we come. We trying to make it everywhere. All right. Let's see if y'all got any questions. All right. So good questions from modern modern day Malcolm. Peace, God. If I increase red light on my computer screen and decrease the blue light in the settings, would this help reduce artificial light damage? Boy, that's an amazing freaking question, and yes, it will. Them the questions I like, because that means you've been listening, God. That's an amazing question, God. That's amazing. Can you have your cameras there? No, you cannot have any cameras there, because people are paying $100, $150 for a ticket, and I would hate for y'all to be recording when people are paying for this information. So, no, and this is the only time I even charge for information like that is when we do tours and stuff like that. And all the money go towards building our healing homes, go towards research laboratories. I'm trying to build my own laboratory too, y'all. So it ain't like we just having the money and doing nothing with it. And it, you get herbs, you get food, and you get a bunch of information that you would never hear anywhere else. <clears throat> what else we got? It says, I always had the feeling in my Ruach that this might be something bad. Al dye salt. Yeah, do not do al dye salt. Sea salt is regular aldehyde salt that's been converted by the sea. Don't do the aldehyde salt today. That's called fortitude aldehyde salt. Stay away from that. That causes high blood pressure. That causes high blood pressure. Any more question according to this particular case? No, the, the seminar will not be live streamed. I'm saying iodine. I'm from St. Louis. I got in. I had my jaw shattered, y'all. Y'all see how my teeth is pushed out? I had my jaw shattered. I got metal from here to here. I got jumped by some Crips in Illinois. No, this happened when you look, I lied. This is when I got jumped in St. Louis at something called the palace. I got jumped at the palace when I was younger and they shattered my jaw. I got hit with some brass knuckles. So when, when my, when they put the metal in my mouth, my jaw grew back wrong, but it shifted my mouth. So my teeth come up, my whole mouth come up. I even get aches and pains sometimes when the winter come because all of that metal that's right there. You see what I'm saying? So so I already got a list because of that. And then I'm from St. Louis, so we got a crazy accent anyway. So it's a lot of words I actually be saying right. Y'all just be hearing them wrong because I can't pronounce them right. Because the way my mouth is, my palate is, and how my tongue have to stick out further than everybody else's tongue because how my jawline has shifted. And that plays a major role in your speech, the way your teeth is actually stationed in your mouth, the way how short and long your tongue is. So, you know, like I have a gap in everything because of that. But that's what gang banging and living a, a, a dangerous life, that's what it do to you. You know what I'm saying? You get warrior wounds. And unfortunately, this is one of, so if you actually listen to me, I have a list when I talk. I hear that lips sound like I got all, I be having to have Jay DSLize all of my, I be like, put a DS on that, Jay. Because all you hear through all of my, <laughs> but it's not on purpose, y'all. It's because what, what went on in my mouth when I was younger, family. <laughs> Sweetie Pie says she loved the uh, commercial. All praises, goddess. Appreciate you. All right, so next question, y'all. One well, next question. So the next question is we're talking about uh I already see it off back. This is talking about some type of cancer. It says, Hi, my name is Blase Blase, and I'm not sure if you answer messages in a timely manner. Uh I don't answer messages, my team do. Uh, I have amazing, amazing staff. Uh, Brother Bernard usually answer all of my messages now through our website. Uh, and if it's something like this, he will send it over to me if I can read it, which is the reason why I'm reading it now. So, uh, so hopefully I got to you in time. It says, I need your help. My father has pancreatic cancer. All right. So we have to break down what cancer is for y'all to truly, truly understand and understand how to so-called heal this so-called disease. All right. So we see that pain, uh, that he have cancer in the pancreas. So I believe I have a pancreas right here. So this is the pancreas. Notice the pancreas is on the back wall of the stomach and it's connected to something called the duodenum. And I teach y'all about the duodenum all the time, which is this nine inch tract called the duodenum. And this is where all of your food absorption uh, is at. But notice that duodenum it's connected right to the pancreas and you see the gallbladder stem in there as well. So I want to get a regular pancreas. This is how it looks like without the stomach. So when the stomach is not there, you see that the gallbladder is connected to it. Not only is the gallbladder connected to it, you see the nine inch duodenum intestinal tract. 
and you see the spleen. It's all associated with the, pan uh, the pancreas. Now, first thing we have to ask ourselves, what is the pancreas? The pancreas is not the largest digestive organ on the body because the actual intestines, the jejunum, the, the echium, the cilium, all of these different intestinal tracts, the small intestines and the large intestines, is actually an organ in the brain within itself. It's called the intrinsic nervous system or the enteric nervous system. But it is the most powerful digestive organ on the body. Now, this is not a gland. They say a gland, the reason why they call it gland or the endocrine system, because they secrete things. But the more and more I go through and I start studying the endocrine system, I notice that these are organs and they're organs because they don't only secrete secretions, they make things. So if it makes something or produces something, it's a organ. If it secretes something, then you can call it a gland. So we have to quit calling the endocrine system the glandular highway. I know I call it that or the endocrine, but it's actually a gland. I mean, it's actually an organ. Now, this thing have over 4,000 enzymic reactions to your food. It helps break down your food. Not only that, it actually secretes something called uh, sodium bicarbonate. And what sodium bicarbonate is, that's where you actually get your baking soda from. That is your alkaline agent. So when you eat food and food goes through this hard astringent uh, acid blowback in the stomach by way of something you would call Hydrochloric acid in the stomach. Let me break this open real quick. If it can open, uh, it just come off. So you have something called hydrochloric acid that's produced by the stomach, right? So it warms the food up and it heats it up and it boils it and it breaks it down. Then it moves over into the duodenum. Well, when it gets over into the duodenum, it's still hot as hell. So what the pancreas does is the pancreas will cre create something or produce something called sodium bicarbonate that will spray into the actual duodenum to calm the food down for the microbes can uptake it into the bloodstream. Uh, not only that, you have something called the islands of Lagerhans inside of the pancreas. And what the islands of Lagerhans does, you have something called the alpha cells. And what the alpha cells do, the alpha cells produces something called glycogon. And what glycogon does, glycogon is a hormone receptor that raises glucose in the bloodstream. Then you have something called the beta cells. And what the beta cells does is that actually produces something called insulin. What insulin does is it either act as a key to open up the cells to let glucose in for glucose can be burnt for you can yield ATP or it turns the sugar back down. Then you have something called the delta cells that produces something called simeotostatin. And what simeotostatin is, is a mixture of glycogon and it's a mixture of insulin. But it also has something called a, stimu uh, a pituitary stimulation growth hormone. Meaning that if something wrong with the pituitary gland, something is automatically wrong with what, y'all? The pancreas. So he has pancreatic cancer. So I can already tell you how this going to go. His food is probably not being broken down right because remember the pancreas have enzymes that help break down your food. So his food probably coming out whole. Uh, his food is probably very, very alkali uh, acidic because what helps alkaline the food is sodium bicarbonate. And his sugar is probably stupid high within the bloodstream because he don't have insulin working properly to keep the sugar down. So we got we to gotta attack. Well, I ain't going to say attack because we don't have war like uh, symptom warlike mindsets when it comes to diseases. We got to aid this very, very quickly, y'all. So what cancer is, the body is made of 150 trillion cells. I'm going to give y'all, this is a, a quick, what they call it, a quick class on cancer. So the body is made of 150 trillion cells. If you're a melanated being, if you are a Caucasian or Asian or a mongonoid, if you come from them different types of species, then your body is made of 50 trillion cells. Well, every cell in your body have something called organelles. Just like your body have something called organs, like the pancreas is an organ, the stomach is an organ, you know, the spleen is considered an organ. Well, your cells have something called organelles. And these organelles actually act just like your organs act. Now, what happens is just like you have to go through something called cellular respiration, you literally have to breathe and, and perspire. You have to inhale and exhale for you can bring oxygen into the bloodstream and the oxygen actually attaches itself to hemoglobin. The whole important point of breathing is for you can bring oxygen to the cells and for the cells can attach or be stripped from hemoglobin to go through something called the mitochondria. And what the mitochondria is there for, the mitochondria then takes oxygen and turn it to carbon dioxide. Once it turns and it, it goes through this literally this transcription or this transfusion or what they call the respiratory uh, respiration chain, mitochondria respiration chain. That's that's what it's called. When it goes through this process, you're breathing oxygen. 
When you breathe in the oxygen, oxygen then goes into the bloodstream by way of the lungs. All of a sudden, it, it, it connects itself. These oxygen molecules connect itself to something called iron phosphate. That's why iron phosphate or hemoglobin is so important to the body. And I'm going to show you all why. Once it attaches itself to hemoglobin, the transportation, which you would call the bloodstream, would take take this uh, hemoglobin to 150 trillion cells of the body. So once the hemoglobin goes to the cells, it will drop off oxygen and say, get off the plane, get off the bus. All right, you at your destination. So then oxygen will knock on the cellular door. You will have a receptor that's, or what, what they would call oxidase or, or reductase. And these things are basically receptors that open up the cell to allow oxygen in. So now once oxygen goes into the cell, the mitochondria actually takes the cell. And when the mitochondria takes the cell, what it does is it breaks it down and it oxidizes oxygen. And then oxygen turns into carbon dioxide. And this is why carbon dioxide is actually important, y'all. A lot of people think that carbon dioxide is not important, but it is. Carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide is both important. So then carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide get broken down into water. This water is then used as a H3O2. Yes, I said it. H3O2 constituents to be used as fuel for the cells can fire off and have vitality. Y'all see that? Now, that took oxygen. What cancer is or what I've been noticing that cancer is, cancer is basically when the oxygen is not being distributed by the bloodstream correctly. This is what you would call anaerobic. So that process I just explained to y'all is called anaerobic. It's called aerobic. My bad. So now I'm finna explain another process. It's called anaerobic, meaning it's there is no oxygen, but the cells still need to produce ATP because without ATP you would die. So guess what happens, y'all? The cell is so freaking smart, and the bacteria in your body, this pleomorphic bacteria, is so freaking smart. What it does is say, okay, he ain't breathing properly. She eating the wrong foods. She not drinking the right H3O2 constituents. Her hemoglobin down. His iron phosphate's down. Damn, but we still need to produce some type of ATP because without ATP, which is essential for life, you gonna die. We still have to burn it and convert glucose to carbon dioxide by way of oxygen to turn it into water for we can fuel the cell, for the cell can fire off, for we can have vitality in life. Because vitality plus life equal power. Power means health and, st and stability. You see what I'm saying? So what, the, so what the pleomorphic bacteria does is it goes through something called an anaerobic process where it will literally create fungus and use fungus to burn into glucose and break down without oxygen and go a carbon dioxide way and then turn the carbon dioxide into this murky water that, does, that uses the least oxygen as possible and then it'll fire off ATP, but it don't fire off adenosine triphosphate. See that? Because it don't have enough oxygen to convert to make adenosine triphosphate. Now you start getting adenosine monophosphate, adenosine diphosphate, this weak ass energy. So the body can't use the weak ass energy. Not only can it use the weak ass energy for real, but it's cutting off oxygen for creating real ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So what's happening is oxygen gets sucked from up out of the cell and fungus starts to build up within the cell. Have y'all ever seen mold and fungus eat through a tree? <coughs> Have y'all ever seen mold and fungus eat through a mushroom? Have y'all ever seen mold and fungus eat through a piece of bread? Guess what it's doing? It's messing up the DNA of these foods. It messes up the DNA of the tree. And it goes through something called uncontrollable cellular mitosis, meaning that there's different enzymes and reactions that is not being playing a key factor because oxygen was not there. Like, for instance, you have something called enzyme reductase. Without oxygen, you don't get reductase. Guess what reductase do? It reduces free radical reductase. I got another one called catalyst. Catalyst, basically, if you want to say it in a, in, a, in a quick way, it keeps the body from being completely cation. Cation equals acid, unstable chemistry. But none of this is produced by the cells when the cells is yielding ADP and AMP because it has no oxygen. Another one it stops is gliothene or uh, 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 gli uh, uh, gliathine or gliadin or gliathine reductase. And what gliathine reductase or gliadin uh or gliad, I mean glutathione. I'm saying gliadin. I'm thinking about uh, I'm thinking about damn damn uh wheats and shit like that. But uh, 
Glutathione, my bad family. But glutathione reductase and glutathione peroxidase. Glutathione reductase and glutathione peroxidase is actually what opens up the NRF2 pathways for your cells can actually detoxify itself. So without oxygen being utilized by the mitochondria to produce ATP, you don't have the glutathione. The glutathione is your main detoxification chemistry. So your cells is not detoxifying. You're not having a reductase, meaning you're not re you're not uh, reducting or stopping the production of free radicals. You're not producing catalase, which is causing the body to be uh, cationic and bringing up the anionic values. And you have something called superoxide dismutase. And superoxide dismutase keep the cells from being what? Huh? Keeping them from becoming mutants. So when you don't have these things happening because the cell is lacking oxygen and you in a fungus way, guess what happens? The cells start to mutate. Not only do the cells start to mutate, but glutathione peroxidase is not there. You're not opening up the NRF2, uh, NRF2 pathways for uh, detoxification. Not only that, you're not producing catalase, meaning you have, you have a strong acidic cationic environment within the, side, uh, within the cells. And reductase is not there. You're not going to be able to reduce the actual free radicals. This is called a dead cells, but cells have to reproduce themselves. So since cells are reproducing themselves with, without all of these enzymes, they're going to birth Cells that's malignant. The cells is going to lose their integrity. They're going to be born with retarded organelles in them. They ain't going to listen to what the other cells coming. So these cells are going to be ugly. And then what's going to happen is the body going to say, damn, all of these cells are starting to produce uncontrollably. They're going through cellular mitosis, apoptosis, the, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the adipose tissues of these cells is looking crazy as hell. So what it does is it clunks them together to stay away from the bloodstream. All right. Now, this is the next step. Since it clunks them together to keep them away from the bloodstream, more oxygen start getting cut off from the cells. So even though they retarded cells or what you call cancer cells, they still smart. They're going to say, man, well, look, you got us messed up. We're going to go through something called angiogenesis. <laughs> Y'all know what angiogenesis is? That's when the damn cancer cells coagulate themselves together and steal blood. Now, this tumor or what you call cancer starts growing. And that's when they say, well, the tumor is getting bad, bigger or the tumor metastasized or the cancer started spreading. That's because it started jacking and, high, and hijacking blood. Then you look and you biopsy the cell and you look inside the cell. Guess what's inside the cell? All types of pleomorphic bacteria. Pleomorphic bacteria. That's why you can't find me one cancerous cell that don't have bacteria or what you'll call a parasite inside of it. So the body is extremely acid family. Basically, that's what you're going through. You're going through metabolic acidosis. The best way to get rid of cancer is to put the body into an alkaline state. How do you put the body into an alkaline state? The first thing you have to do is cleanse the blood. Make sure that the blood is completely balanced. While you're cleansing the blood, clean out the small intestinal tract. You have to cleanse the gut. While you're cleansing the gut, you have to turn on the kidneys and the adrenals but because the kidneys and the adrenals is what kicks on called something called acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is an actual hormone that stimulates, dilates, and contract what you would call lymphatic vessels. The lymphatic system is the sewage system of the body. In order to kick the lymphatic system on, you have to turn on acetylcholine. The best way to turn on acetylcholine is by stimulating the adrenal glands. So you need to cut on the adrenal glands to cut, to cut the kidneys on, to get the nephrons and the kidneys actually uh, filtrating the metabolic waste of the actual lymphatic system. The best way to do this is a all-fruit Diet, family, all fruit diet. Since you have cancer, let's see what they said, though. Let me make sure they said it ain't stage four. My father's had pancreatic cancer, and they put him through chemotherapy. So you got chemotherapy. So, no, you can't do all fruit because they're going to put the chemo back into the blood too strong. So I would say you have to go all raw, do a 60% fruit diet, raw fruit diet, and a 40% of vegetable diet. That's what you're going to need to do. And he got stents in his stomach for vomiting. And they put stents in his stomach, meaning he's vomiting a lot, and they had to stop the vomiting. So uh, we're going to have to do that a different way too because these fruits like that with that chemotherapy, once it rush the bloodstream, that's going to make you vomit any more, vomit even, even more. So let's keep the stents in for now. That's what I would do if I was y'all. In the stomach, and it says he was due for surgery today, but surgery had halted because the cancer had spread. It see, so the cancer done metastasized already. Uh, I wonder where it metastasized to. Currently, we are waiting on the doctor to update us on his condition and their guesstimation prognosis. Now, knowing some of these things have I've been exposed to, I know it's time for me to step in. Could you possibly lead me to the very first thing I should do? 
the first thing I would do, sister, is I would change his diet. I would immediately put him on a 60% fruit diet and a 40% high yielding vegetable diet that's high water, right? That's what I put him on first, period. All right, now we're going to have to be careful cleansing him because he have a lot of chemotherapy within the within his cells. And they usually pack themselves within the tissues and they like to hide around organelles. So once we start detoxing him, it's going to pull all of the actual chemotherapy out of the cells and put it in the bloodstream. This We got to be very careful with this because you can take him out because the blood will change its acidity or its potential hydrogen to an acidic environment. And if it is at a four point, is that a 7.45? So between a 7.45 and a 7.50, you know, you pretty cool. But if it go above that or any lower than that, you can die of alkalosis or acidosis. So we're going to have to be very careful with this. We should start pulling and tugging away at his cells slowly. So I think you need to start with a geogenetic level one or you can get the level three and just take it real slow. Introduce these to him very, very slow. And you have to watch him. Make sure that his kidneys are filtering. You can do that by checking his urine every morning before you eat or drink anything. Make sure that he got white sediment inside of his urine. That lets you know that he's getting rid of the metabolic waste and the metabolic acidosis. But the one thing we don't want to do is pull and tug at the lymphatic system and get the lymphatic system uh, opening and moving and his kidneys is not online because now all of that ash or what we're going to call chemotherapy going to sit on the kidneys and the kidneys going to kick it right back into the bloodstream and that will kill him. So we got to do slow cleansing. So I like to, you know, I like for Kawhi to work with him personally on this case. But uh, what I say is the geogenetic level three or level one, slow cleansing him. And we're going to have a, have a, a very, you know, uh, not not too much of a dense diet, but it's going to have to be dense, though, to keep that healing going slow. See, when you put them on all fruits, it's going to be so hydrative that it's going to start flushing the cells. But if you add vegetables, it will slow down the healing. So if you go 60 percent fruits and 40 percent vegetables, high yielding water vegetables, that'll keep that cleanse or that detoxification on a steady cleanse and we won't be pushing too much chemotherapy into the bloodstream too fast that's what i truly recommend for this i don't mind buying things but i need to know what to get and where to start i do not want my father to die uh me i'm not a doctor so i can't tell you exactly what to do especially on these platforms and what they're doing to me right now but if that was me that's what i would do i would put them on an all raw diet 60 percent fruits Astringent fruits at that because we do want to pull and tug a little bit. And then uh, I would do astringent fruit, 60% fruits, and I would do 40% vegetables. And then I would get the geogenetic therapeutic package. You need to be doing neural lymphatic massages on him, opening up the meridian pathways. You need to be doing lower back and kidney massages on him. And you need to give him key lime and lemon shots every day. Uh, afternoon, every morning, every eat, well, every rising, let me not say morning, every rising, every afternoon, and every evening, give him lemon shots. And I have a new product that we haven't got a label for yet, but it's been kicking cancer's ass. It's a T. And man, 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 I can't wait to get my label on this. I just been sending it out in big bags. It looked like it's it looked like you just went to a, 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 a herbal herbal store somewhere in Mexico because it don't got no labels on it, but it's been working so good. So, you know, I'm working to get that actually labeled to get everything uh, 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 ratioed out properly to have my proper ingredients and everything on it before we can start selling it that way. But uh, I have a tea that I send to you for free. Since I since I can't really sell it because I don't have a barcode and stuff on it yet. And and do that. Have them sip on that tea. Get that geogenetic therapeutic package. I will send my tea with that and keep them on that, that raw diet, 60% fruits, 40% vegetables. And I think that a, a major change will happen very, very quickly. Very, very quickly. So that's what you need. That's exactly what you need. Yes, that's right. I'm a healer, not a doctor. I don't diagnose anything and I don't treat anything. We heal facts. All right. So if y'all got any questions so far for this one, y'all can ask it. If not, I'm going to do one more question. We're going to get up out of here. One more question. We're going to get up out of here. Yes. Can you do cold press? Yes, you can. It's, uh, is lit or is letter. I think I said your name right. I hope I, hopefully I did, but yeah, you can do cold press. I mean, that's actually what I recommend. I recommend cold press juicing. Yes, chemotherapy is most definitely mustard gas. That means you've been watching me, Nick. Uh, Nikki Tomoleso, you must have been watching my videos. It's most definitely mustard gas. It was used in World War One and Two. 
And I hope I didn't take y'all down a long ha rabbit hole explaining what cancer is, my point of view of cancer. And that was my point of view from studying cancer, studying biology, studying cells, seeing what's happening inside the cells. That's my point of view of cancer, which is a total different point of view from the allopathic community. I do want to put that out here because I'm going to put this on my YouTube channel and I don't want them taking it down. And for, for everybody on here, I am not a doctor, so I'm not on here trying to prescribe, trying to uh, prognose, diagnose, and all that other stuff. The FDA does not approve anything I'm selling. I don't want them to approve it, to be honest with you. I don't need them in all of my business and shit. What kind of fruits? Uh, the fruits. Uh, let me take to my fruit chart real quick. I do my fruit chart real fast. So let me change this around real quick. I'm going to show you what kind of fruits. All right. So we go to eat to live. <coughs> I feel you. I don't want him to die either. I'm finna show y'all stranger fruits, family. See, you see, I was all white and I had to scroll and scroll down, but then it popped up. So sometimes y'all got to do this. But the new site, I want to show y'all a new site, but y'all going to be trying to go to it and order stuff. And then y'all going to be mad when stuff don't come yet because the new site ain't completely done. So I can't, I want to show y'all how dope it is, but we're just trying to work the kinks and the bugs out. So these are stringent fruits, y'all. All right, let me get real close to it. So when I say stringent fruits, I mean stuff like this. Grapes, key limes, lemons, pomegranates, tangerines, mangoes, oranges with seeds, grapefruits with seeds, apples, pears, peaches, pineapples. All right. Now, you can mix these things with sub citric fruits, too. So remember, your stringent fruits, they detoxify and they pull acids from the cells. Then you have your antioxidant fruits, or what I call your anthocyanins. Anthocyanins is your berry group. Blueberries, blackberries, red berries, strawberries, mulberries, juniper berries, raspberries, elderberries, cherries, goji berries, persimmons, bear berries. And uh, I need to take rosehip berries up out of that because I, I don't recommend rose hips no more then you have your phytonutrients or your rebuilders or your energizer this is your melon uh, family watermelon musk melon cucumbers I always take the skin off your cucumbers uh unless you're gonna blend them up it is a lot of nutrients in the skin of these things but you most definitely have to blend them up and put them in a blender or a food processor real good cantaloupe honeydew horn melons bitter melons bitter as hell but will cure your heal your diabetes winter melons honey glow melons and papaya Pata papaya is actually a melon as well so that's what I mean by that. And I also have a, a fruit chart that you can go to. A fruit chart to go to, man. Look, just go on my website and look around, y'all. There's a bunch of amazing stuff on there. It's a bunch of amazing stuff on there, y'all. Like, it really is. It really is, family. So let me see if y'all got any questions as far as this, and then we'll do this last one. Okay, so look, let's move on to the next question. Is this one? Hold on, here go one that has something to do with it. Y'all keep do anyone right? Do you have anyone you recommend where I can get upright? No, nah, uh, we sell upright. We sell upright. I believe it's on there unless Kawhi took it off. But I think we sell upright by the pounds. Let's go on there and go on the whole herb. So look, let me show you how to do this. So when you go to the website, click on herbal store and go down to whole herbs. Click on whole herbs. And I believe we ask, I believe we do got upright. Let's type it in and see if it pop up. Upright. I think we got upright. If we if it ain't on here, uh, Kawhi must have took it off. Yeah, see, it's right there. We got upright on the site. So just go to the site, go to herbal store, click on whole herbs. You see that? Go all the way down to whole herbs. And then uh, type in Albright in the... Oh, Albright teacher. You right, goddess. That do say teacher. That do say teacher. So she must have took it off. That means we probably low. Because I remember when I first started uh, promoting it a lot, y'all was buying y'all was buying 100 pounds a month from us. And we, we ended up buying out our supplier. They had to regrow it for us to even buy it again. And we had to wait damn near 10 months for it to grow. So... That's probably what that is. So it's probably that again where I don't I don't handle this part of the business no more, y'all. My mama and Kawhi do. I'm so busy doing the seminars. I'm doing movie films. I'm doing food forensic investigations. I'm doing this Netflix deal. I'm doing classes. I'm teaching. I'm traveling. I'm doing so much stuff now that 
they literally handle the business and I go out and I teach and I and I show and I give y'all free information and that's how we keep everything reciprocating and we're keeping everything going. Plus, I'm back building a healing home. I'm trying to get the healing home back open. So I'm not all in the system like that no more. I have a whole team that I pay weekly to do that. So I didn't know that part. So forgive me. So yeah, we still got the teachers. I'm gonna ask Kawhi tonight uh, why it's off the site, and uh, I do a post just to let y'all know what's going on with the Albright. But we do have the Albright teachers that works amazing, y'all. It works amazing. Y'all key can three bitters be combined? No, drink them back. Drink them like I said, back to back. Quit trying to cheat the system, God. And matter of fact, before we get up out of here, I want to do a quiz. So <clears throat> let's see who got it. Let's see who got it. Let me ask a good question. If you got cancer, I said that the cancer would start stealing blood. And by way of stealing blood, there was a name that I named. Do anybody got the name? When cancer literally taps, starts stealing and siphoning blood from the bloodstream. When a tumor hijacked the bloodstream, what is that called? And, and it grows new vessels. What is that called? They get three bitters. I will send them out tomorrow. I only got two of them, though. What is it called? I give y'all a clue. It starts with an A. It starts with an A. Who got it? Not acidosis. Acidosis or metabolic acidosis when a, when acid start burning the tissues. Hemoglobin is literally iron phosphate that is attached to oxygen. Oxidation is basically what happens when you oxidize something. It starts with an A, y'all. And it ain't acidosis. <laughs> Mutations is when the cells change their forms because it lack reductase. Aerobic is when the cells you when the mitochondria of the cells use oxygen. Metastasize is when it grows. <laughs> Y'all funny to them. <laughs> no, ATP says for identity trial phosphate. There you go. Hold on. Here she goes. She got it. Ronnie, Ronnie Mommy. There you go, goddess, with your smart self. It's called angiogenesis. Angiogenesis. Could y'all, everybody shoot some hearts for Ronnie Mommy. Shoot some hearts for Ronnie Mommy because she got it right. I just, I'm pretty sure uh, Kawhi and I'm pretty sure that Danny is in the chat. Okay, Let's Talk Food is in the chat and Goddess Kawhi is in the chat. I uh, I just screenshotted her, y'all. She won one. Yes, and Angiogenesis is what it's called. Ronnie Mommy won it, y'all. Y'all can't be trying to say it now. <laughs> So, yes, Ronnie, Ronnie, mommy, she won a three bidders. We will ship it off to you tomorrow. What I need you to do, Miss Ronnie, mommy, you need to go to my inbox, my DMs right after this. And you need to put uh, your full name and your address and we'll make sure we ship it off to you. Yes, angiogenesis. Y'all look that up. All right. I got it. Y'all ready for another question? Y'all ready for another question? Y'all ready for another question? Type in some nines. I got a good one for y'all. Ooh, we, I got a good one for y'all. Yes, um, chlorophyll from Alpha, Alpha Sprouts is amazing, brother. It's amazing. Make sure you get some. Use some, yes. Y'all ready for another question? Type in some nines. All right. With this one, I'm going to even do it quicker for y'all. Y'all have to name them three. Y'all don't have to be in order with this. Y'all don't even got to do it in uh, chronological order. All right? There is... I need y'all to name me. Hmm. Okay, I got this. There's there's something called the Islands of Langerhans inside of the pancreas. There's something that's called the Islands of Langerhans that's in the interior part of the pancreas. It produces three types of cells. I need to know the three types of cells it produces and what the what the cells produce. Let's get it. And since this is a harder one, I want oh, I will do more than just the uh, three bitters. I do the three bitters and I do something else. But I need to know the three type of cells it produce. Yes, okay, alpha, beta, and delta, B cells, A cells, and D cells. But I need to know what they produce. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Come on, and I give y'all some more herbs. I give y'all some astringent. I give y'all astringent herbs and some of my famous black seed oil with the three bitters. Who got it? Come on. Let me see. Y'all like y'all like fuck all that. <laughs> Alpha cells, beta cells, and delta cells. But what do they produce? 
Okay, insulin. Okay, one produces insulin. What else? <laughs> you said woman dioxins is a, a environmental pollutants. <laughs> that was a good try though. No, only <laughs> y'all can Google it if y'all want. Hurry up. Okay, hold on, hold on. We got somebody. Where she at? Hold on. Her name is Crystal with the K. Crystal with the K got it. Else, insulin and the Delta. Yes. So Crystal with the K got it right, y'all. So everybody shoot some hearts for Crystal with a K. Crystal with a K got it right. Crystal with a K. I just need your name and I need your shipping address and I'll make sure that these get shipped out to you tomorrow. And what you got is you got the three bitters and you got black seed oil and you get the astringent tincture. You get that stringent tincture, which will strange your it will strange your ass. Yes, it do produce sodium bicarbonate, but I was talking about the cells in the eyelids of Langerhans, y'all. Yes, insulin, glycogon, and simiotostatin. Y'all learning though. I'm gonna do one more, then I'm gonna get out of here. Y'all wanna do one more question? Type in some nines. One more. Hey Jay, let's clean up in here and then let's roll, bro. We gotta be out on our flight early in the morning. Y'all ready? Type in some nines. We'll do one more. Who got it? Who got it? Who got it? <laughs> I can't give away three bitters, but you know what I can give away? I give away a bag of purple sea moss and a lymphatic tonic. A bag of purple sea moss and a lymphatic tonic. And my question is this. Let me see. What is my question? Oh, I got one for y'all. If I have weak skin and if my connective tissue is not strong, if, if I'm hot all the time and if I'm gaining weight and if I'm, if I'm suffering from depression, what organ in my body is obstructed? Give it to me. And you have to say the right one. You have to say what organ in my body is obstructed. I'm depressed. My skin weak. I'm gaining weight. I'm hot and cold all day. What organ? Y'all saying I need the I need the right one though. Uh oh, here it go. My, uh, what is Michelin one two five? The parathyroid. That's right. Michael and one, two, five got that right. The parathyroid, not the thyroid. Shoot some hearts up for Michael. What I got for you is the lymphatic, uh, sweet tonic. And I got a big ass bag of purple sea moss for you. Yep. The parathyroid. Michael got it right. Make sure you hit up your name and your address inside of my, uh, DM. I'm going to check them as soon as we get off and I'm going to send it all to Kawhi and send it to my mama for we can have a uh, shipping team ship it out to y'all tomorrow. All right, y'all. Uh, man, I, I just now noticed it was 11 o'clock, man. I got to get up out of here. So I love y'all. And deed and in truth. Remember, if you need any herbs, www.yakiawaken.com. I will be in Prairie View or what you would call Houston, Texas. So make sure y'all check me out, family. And I'm going to leave off on that note, y'all. Grab y'all tickets. Grab y'all tickets. It's selective seating because we want to make it scarcity. We can't have everybody in a mama there, plus for security purposes. So make sure y'all grab y'all tickets. Go to ebrentbright.com slash HBCU Health and Liberation Tour, and it'll pop up. Y'all key awaken. Grab y'all tickets. We're going to have a fun time. We're going to take pictures. We're going to kick back. We're going to laugh. We're going to love, and we're going to learn and remember, family. I love y'all indeed in the truth. Peace, love, light, and healing. Peace to the gods. Peace to the earths. Peace. I'm going to upload this to YouTube, y'all, too. I'm going to upload it. Blessings, family.